Hey Mustangs, in this video we're going to be taking a look at some background information to help you understand gene regulation a little bit better. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start from the beginning which is with DNA. So we're going to go ahead and draw DNA here. Remember DNA structure is a double helix thanks to Rosalind Franklin. She was one of the people that helped us find that out. So here we have our DNA. And when we think about DNA and its function, what it is, people think of it kind of as this mysterious molecule um, that is necessary for life. But when you think about it, it actually has really, a really simple function. So we can actually say that the function of DNA um, is that it has instructions for building and maintaining a living thing. So DNA has instructions for building and maintaining A living thing. Okay, so DNA has instructions for building, maintaining a living thing. Very specifically, there are parts within the DNA that have instructions that build proteins. So we could actually take this definition of the function of DNA and we could actually say that there are sections within the DNA that has, have instructions for building proteins which then build and maintain a living thing. So most of the DNA that we actually see uh, in the cells of many organisms is actually just junk DNA. And that's kind of a misnomer because it's not really junk. Um, it just doesn't have instructions for making proteins and that's why it was referred to as junk DNA. But what we've actually found out over the years after it was named is that the junk DNA sections are actually used and helpful in identifying where the genes are and in, involved in transcription and stuff like that um, and DNA replication. So if you look within a piece of DNA, you will find sections that actually have instructions for making the DNA. Those are referred to as the genes. If it doesn't have instructions for making DNA, it's junk DNA. Okay, But the parts of the DNA that do have instructions for making proteins are called genes. So genes have instructions for making proteins. Okay. Those proteins, once they're made, they can help build and maintain a living thing. So again, don't think of DNA as this crazy, miraculous, um, you know, mysterious thing. It's just instructions for making proteins, which then build a living thing and maintain a living thing. Now, in order for that to happen, the instructions are here, but the protein has to be built. So these are basically directions or instructions on how to build the proteins, but they must be built. So next, what has to happen? is going to be the gene instructions have to be sent to a ribosome uh, in order for the protein to be built. So the gene section will be transcribed into mRNA. mRNA is just a copy of the DNA instructions. So transcription occurs, the DNA instructions are rewritten into mRNA, so now here's the instructions for building a protein, but the protein still hasn't been built yet. This is simply the instructions for building the proteins. Now, if this were a prokaryote mRNA, it's already ready to go, but remember in eukaryotes, um, there would have to be some modifications that happen here. So introns would have to be cut out, there'd be, have to be a five prime cap and a poly A tail added on and so on and so on. But in any case, we have instructions for building proteins. From here, those instructions would get sent to a ribosome. So I'm going to draw a ribosome here. Okay. So these mRNA instructions get sent to a ribosome, connect to a ribosome here, and then the ribosome is going to read the instructions and actually build the protein. So here at this point, this is when the protein is finally going to get built. Now this point is called translation. So from here to there, Rewriting the DNA instructions to mRNA is transcription. From here to here, and when it's actually getting, the instructions are getting read and the protein's being built, that is translation. So when translation occurs, the ribosomes read the instructions in the mRNA and start putting together amino acids. Okay, so amino acids begin to connect together. The amino acids that connect together are based upon the instructions. So remember, there's 20 different amino acids, and the directions say exactly which amino acids to connect together in which order. So a whole bunch of amino acids get connected together to build a protein. I'm going to stop here at three, though. And now you have a protein. Okay. 
Now these proteins can do many things within the cell. So some proteins are enzymes, which means they will be involved in chemical reactions. Um, many of them are involved specifically in metabolic pathways. Okay. So metabolic pathways are involved in building molecules for a cell or breaking molecules apart for a cell. Um, some are involved in building, like for example, um, there are proteins like collagen. Collagen is involved in uh, building the skin and holding skin cells uh, in place and keeping the skin nice and firm. We make less and less collagen as we get older. That's why we start to get all wrinkly. Um, so some proteins are involved in building. Uh, you have some proteins that are in the cell membrane. So cell membrane proteins. Uh, and you even have other proteins that do other jobs, such as carry oxygen. Uh, there's actually hemoglobin proteins. Okay. So hemoglobin proteins are involved in carrying oxygen through the body. So these are just a few examples of what some of the proteins can do. Okay. So some proteins, this is just a few examples of what some proteins can do. Now, in order for these proteins to actually be built, this whole process has to happen. Now, sometimes you need certain proteins, other times you don't need them. So these genes have to be regulated. So when we talk about gene regulation, um, we talk about the cell being able to turn the instructions on or off, okay? Um, so actually being able to turn the DNA instructions on or off, so that way a protein, either when it's, the gene is turned on, the protein will be built, or if when the gene is turned off, the protein will not be built. Now, why would it want to do that? Why would it want to regulate genes? Okay. Um, the cell sh doesn't want to waste materials or energy. The cell wants to be very efficient, and that's what keeps us alive, the efficiency of the cell. So if a gene is turned on and it's making a whole bunch of proteins that aren't needed, that is a waste. And the cell doesn't want to waste materials and it doesn't want to waste energy. It takes energy to do all this. It takes energy to go from here to there and even building the protein. So the cell doesn't want to waste energy if it doesn't need the proteins. So it'll turn genes off when those proteins are not needed. And then when the proteins are needed, it'll turn them on. So when we talk about regulating genes, we're talking about turning them on or off. And cells have to have a way to control that. If they don't have a way to control that, it's going to waste tons of energy and tons of materials. So cells regulate their genes. Now the last bit of background information here will be on metabolic pathways. So metabolic pathways okay. So a metabolic pathway is going to be a process in which materials, uh, specifically, usually, um, molecules for the cell, how they're built or how they're broken apart. So process of building or breaking apart molecules for a cell. So that's what a metabolic pathway is. Now, a metabolic pathway is connected to what we saw when we were talking about genes. Um, the proteins, specifically enzymes, enzymes, remember, are a type of protein. So enzymes are a type of protein. Don't forget that. Okay, so enzymes are a type of protein. That means that there is a gene for every enzyme that is made. So um, some enzymes have more than one gene that is used to build it because there is actually multiple parts to the enzyme. Uh, and that goes for other proteins as well. Um, but for the most part, we'll just stick with the simplicity and say that every enzyme basically has a gene uh, that has instructions for building it. So enzymes connected to what we just saw. Now, in a metabolic pathway, there's usually more than one enzyme. So I'm gonna put enzyme one, here's enzyme two, here's enzyme three, okay? And what happens is in this metabolic pathway, let's say, let's start with building. We have a molecule 
and we want to change it into something that the cell can use. So what happens is enzyme 1 grabs that molecule and it's going to change it in some way. So I'm going to go like that. So now that molecule has been changed by enzyme 1. Then enzyme 2 is going to grab it and it's going to change it. So now we have here. Then finally enzyme 3 grabs it and enzyme 3 in this case makes our final product of what we're actually trying to make. Something crazy like that, okay? Um, so in a metabolic pathway, it's a series of steps that are going to happen in order to either build or break apart a molecule so that way the cell can use it. Um, so here I was talking about building where it takes a precursor molecule and it changes it, changes it, changes it. Now these molecules um, are often referred to as metabolites. And it makes sense, they're part of metabolic pathways. So metabolites um, are changed and modified through a series of steps by using enzymes in order to change them, either to break them apart or to build them in some way. Now, the connection to genes is that these enzymes can be made when the cell needs them if the cell doesn't need them, it won't make these enzymes. So if it doesn't need to build a molecule, the genes will turn off for enzyme one, two, and three. When it does need to build the molecule, it'll turn the genes back on, which start making these enzymes, and then they can be used to build the metabolite. Okay, it can actually build the molecule that we're looking for. Um, or if you needed to break something down,